welcome Professor Bassam Z. Shakashiri. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my lab. Are you ready to learn? Yeah. Are you ready to have fun? Well, I want you to sit back and relax and enjoy what's going to happen. I want you to pay close attention to the different things and exciting things that we're going to be doing. And you, of course, know that in my lab, as everywhere else, we obey all the safety rules and all the safety regulations. So that's why you see me wearing my goggles to protect my eyes. And you also notice that we have a fire extinguisher uh, ready to be used just in case something does go out of control. We're not planning on anything going out of control. We just have it ready as a safety precaution. This next experiment um, is uh, one that um, is going to be done by a very special friend of mine. I have everybody in my lab is a friend of mine, but this very special friend. And I'm going to ask her to come and uh, help us do this experiment. So please welcome Elizabeth. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. How are you today? Good. Are you ready to uh, do the experiment? Yeah. What do we need for this experiment? Well, we need some raisins. We need some raisins. Let me see if I can find some raisins. Yes, here's some Some raisins. mineral water. Some mineral water. Well, and this a tall glass. And a tall glass. Okay. So here's the glass. Here's the uh, uh, mineral water. And here are the raisins. So what do we do next? Well, first we open the can. Okay. Pour it in. Oh, look at all that frothing. You know what that is, right? That's carbon dioxide gas coming from the carbonated beverage, right? Okay. What's the next thing we do? And put some raisins in. Put some raisins in. Oh, good. I noticed that you put your goggles on before you did the experiment. I'm very proud of you for having done that. And why do we put our goggles on? So we can obey the safety rules. And protect ourselves, right? Right. Okay. Now, what grade are you in, Elizabeth? I'm in third grade. Uh-huh. Have you given any thought as to my, what you might do when you grow up? Well, I want to be a marine biologist. A marine biologist. She wants to be a scientist. Isn't that neat, right? Well, yeah. Now, in science, we make observations about the different things that are happening. So what is happening in, inside this uh, uh, glass that we have here? Well, it appears that the raisins are going up and then sinking. The raisins, indeed, are going up, and then they're sinking. And, and you notice that lots of bubbles, you know, the carbon dioxide bubbles, what they do is they stick to the raisins, and they make the raisins float to the top of the liquid. And then when the, when the carbon dioxide bubbles escape to the room, to the atmosphere, then the raisins sink back again. So this is a very straightforward experiment that anybody can do, can do safely uh, at home, in school, anywhere. That, uh, that you can get all these three ingredients. So thank you very much, Elizabeth, for your help. And I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, before you go, actually, before you go, uh, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to show you um, a very special chemical. Would that be all right if I showed that to you? OK, this special chemical is called liquid nitrogen. And it is, and it is kept inside a thermos bottle. It's a very cold liquid. Its temperature is minus 196 degrees Celsius. So let's spill some on the tabletop here. And you see it's uh, boiled because it hits the warm tabletop. And what I'm going to do is show you uh, a very interesting, what I hope is an interesting uh, experiment um, using this um, uh, helium filled balloon. So what I'm going to do, you ready for this, Elizabeth? Yep. You still have your goggles on, right? Yeah. OK, so we take this helium-filled balloon, and we put the liquid nitrogen on it. And you see the liquid nitrogen slows down the movement of the uh, Some of you are covering your ears. You think this is going to blow up, right? <laughs> uh, that's good. Now we see it collapses because the movement of the helium gas has been slowed down. And when the uh, balloon uh, then warms up, it, it'll simply uh, rise. Let's see what happens to it now. You see, it is really going all the way, all the way to the ceiling. Hey, how is that? OK, is that good, right? Yeah. 
Now, Eliz Elizabeth, before you go back, uh, I'd like to make a very special presentation to you. I actually would like you to have uh, uh, one of those uh, roses. But before I do that, uh, I'd like to do something with the rose. <laughs> I'm going to put the rose in liquid nitrogen. And we'll see what happens to it. The liquid nitrogen, remember now, is at minus 196 degrees Celsius. And here is this very special rose, Elizabeth. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. Huh? You see what? You sure you're okay? Yeah. You see, this, uh, the rose petals, the beautiful rose petals become so brittle when they are frozen. So what I really would like you to do is to have a real <laughs> rose that you can take back. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. <laughs> and this experiment is one that we will do with an element called sulfur. This is the form that the element sulfur uh, exists in. And what I'm going to do is take some sulfur, and I'm going to burn the sulfur. And after I start burning the sulfur that I will have in this spoon, what I will do is I will take the spoon with the burning sulfur, put it inside this flask that's been filled with oxygen gas. And at the bottom, you see that we have a blue colored liquid. This is actually a liquid that um, uh, has, is, is uh, water. And we've added to it an indicator that indicates to us whether we have an acid or a base. Uh, so what we'll have is some of the sulfur. We burn it in the flame like so. And it combines with the oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. Once it starts burning, we'll see a blue flame. Maybe if we can dim the light, we can see that blue flame better. There. And now I will take this and put it inside this flask. And you see that glow is because of the sulfur combining with the oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, we can begin to see some fumes. If you look closely, you begin to see some fumes. And uh, we are forming sulfur dioxide, which itself um, is a pollutant. Um, air pollution and smog and uh, have uh, in them, uh, among other things, sulfur dioxide. So if we turn the lights back up, please. Now, now what I'm going to do is, uh, you see it's still burning. Uh, and what I'm going to do is lift this up and mix the sulfur dioxide with the indicator solution that's in there. And you see what's happened. Again, the color change indicates to us that a chemical reaction has taken place, and in fact, this is the kind of reaction that takes place when we form acid rain. Because sulfur dioxide combines with the moisture that's in the air to form um, acid rain. Coming up, Professor Shakashiri realizes the alchemist's dream, turning copper into gold. And now, ask you to look at a reaction which I will carry out in this large beaker. This is a beaker. It has a volume of about four liters. And I need to turn this on like so. OK. Um, what I will do is mix three different liquids that are, that are clear and colorless. You know, a lot of people confuse the words clear and colorless. They think they mean the same thing. They don't. Because you can have a clear and colored liquid. But what I have here are three clear and colorless liquids. So here's the first one, which I will add. And you see it's kind of frothing a little bit. Um, and then I add the next one. You know, for chemical reactions to take place, we have to mix the chemicals. And we mix them, in this case, uh, by the use of this stirrer that's down there. So. See anything happening? 
You like that? This is an example of what we call a chemical oscillating reaction. And the mixture that we have there has in it eight or nine different components, like water, potassium iodate, sulfuric acid, manganese sulfate, potato starch. And this beautiful change, this beautiful sequence of color changes is fascinating. That is what attracts us to science. That is why we spend a lot of time doing science and doing mathematics, trying to explain this very beautiful behavior that is taking place in this uh, chemical oscillating reaction as well as in other uh, systems. Uh, all right, so let me now do another experiment at this end of the table. I know you're fascinated by the color changes that are taking place here, so we'll keep an eye on that, uh, and we'll see how long these oscillations uh, last. Uh, one of the things that we're going to um, do is to see if we can um, make some additional chemical transformations. These chemical transformations we're going to try to do using um, some copper pennies. So I'm going to take a couple of copper pennies, put them in this uh, uh, porcelain dish that has a handle, like so. Take uh, actually three copper pennies, put them in there. And then uh, what I'm going to do is take some uh, metallic zinc and put some zinc on top of them. Okay, so they're kind of covered with zinc. They don't have to be completely covered. Just have a, some zinc metal there. Then I'm going to add a solution of what we call zinc chloride. So here's the zinc chloride solution. So we have zinc, the copper pennies, and the um, <coughs> zinc chloride solution. And I'm going to heat this mixture. So I take the beautiful roses either way and start the heating by turning the burner on, put this like so, and we'll see what kind of changes happen when we heat a solution of zinc chloride in contact with metallic zinc, uh, also in contact with the uh, copper penny. So this will take a while for it to, to go. Let me add a little bit more zinc here. So we have enough zinc covering all the copper pennies. So this is going to take a while to do. And as this is happening, I'd like to show you still another set of uh, <coughs> properties of uh, uh, liquids as the copper pennies are um, cooking. So to do that, uh, I need to get uh, these balloons out here. You know, I like to use balloons a lot, right? I heard somebody say, uh-oh. <laughs> so that builds up the excitement, right? So what, what we're doing is what we're doing is this. What, what I'm doing is taking the, uh, uh, a match, and I'm taking this balloon and put the match under it. What happens? The balloon, bl balloon pops, right? No big deal. Anybody knows that, right? So next, what I'm going to do is take a match, strike it, and now I'm going to put it under this balloon. And it doesn't pop. You know why? Because I have water in there. And water absorbs a lot of heat from the flame and prevents the balloon from uh, popping. So let me show you how this uh, really works by using this transparent balloon. There's the water at the bottom, right? We put this like so, and it doesn't burn. So that's because water has a large heat capacity. It has the ability to absorb a lot of uh, heat before it is um, uh, it, be before you can burn the balloon. Okay, let's take a quick look at these pennies here. We see the liquid is um, burning, so we turn. I mean, it's um, boiling, not burning. It's boiling, boiling. And so what I will do is I will <coughs> look for um, a way to get the liquid out. Uh, before I get the liquid out, I want to get the flame out of the way so I don't burn myself. And I'm going to get the chemical oscillating reaction out of the way, too, so that we have plenty of room to see things. And uh, we look now into the uh, 
Let's see what we have here. Here's the first penny that I dish out. And you see that it's no longer a copper penny, right? It is a, it looks silvery. So maybe what we've done here is, is achieve part of the alchemist's dream, right? Of changing copper, copper to silver. And we'll see if we can change it to something else. Let's get this third one out. We did put three in there, right? There's the third one. OK, so we see what we've done here. We've made ourselves some uh, silver pennies. And what I'm going to do is take one of the silver pennies. And they're fairly safe to, to handle, so I'll just hold it like this. And then I'm going to put it in this flame here, and we'll see what happens to it. So watch and see what happens to the penny. And you see it's beginning to change color. And there, you see? And we have achieved the alchemist's dream now by making copper change to silver, change to gold. Let me cool this off. And I'll show you uh, what I did before you came to my lab. Uh, I'll show you that we have the transmutation of what looks like the transmutation of uh, copper to silver to gold by looking at these uh, three pennies that you have there. So really what we've done, <laughs> what we've done is to, is to deposit some zinc on the surface of the copper penny, give it that uh, metallic zinc color, which looks like silver. And then when we heated the <coughs> uh, zinc that is coating the, the copper penny, the zinc diffused into the copper and formed an alloy. All right, so that's one experiment with, uh, with metals. Let's uh, look at another experiment that we're going to do at this end of the uh, lab bench. This experiment we're going to do actually with uh, this piece of uh, uh, this ball, which is actually a, a cast iron ball that has a screw top on it, which uh, screws like this. But what I'm going to do is put some water in here. Okay? I'll put some water in here and do the experiment uh, over at this end of the bench um, where I have a safety protection shield. In fact, what I'm going to do is uh, take this um, cast iron ball and that's already been filled with water. It's cold water. I'm going to put the screw on it and I'm going to tighten it very, very well. Let's use the wrench to tighten it. That's cold, all right. So what we have here is water inside a sealed cast iron ball. And what I'm going to do next is take the cast iron ball that has in it the water, and I'm going to put it in this empty can. This empty can is where I'm going to put it like so. Next, I will take a slush of a carbon dioxide of dry ice and acetone. The temperature of this slush is minus 78 degrees Celsius, the same as the sublimation temperature of dry ice. And it's very, very cold. And I'm going to try then to freeze the water that's inside that cast iron ball by pouring the <coughs> slush on top of it, like so. OK, so here it goes. And what I'm going to do quickly is put this box on top of it and get out of the way. <laughs> we always have to obey safety rules because a lot of interesting and unexpected things sometimes happen. You saw, you saw and heard what happened here. The cast iron ball um, was broken into two pieces. Here's the first piece. And where is the second piece? It jumped all over the place. When water freezes, it expands. And the expansion of water broke that sealed cast iron ball that we have. Now, before you came to my lab, 
I did this very same experiment with no one in the lab. And I'd like to show you that. Now, if you look at the monitor, you will see this experiment done slightly differently with the cast iron ball inside a plastic beaker that uh, we put the dry ice. There it is. And you see what happened. Now, let's, let's take a look at that, uh, if we can, in, uh, in slow motion to see if we can uh, uh, see the pieces of the cast iron ball flying all over the place. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. And um, <clears throat> there it is. You see, there's no protection there, but no one else is in the lab, right? And so the expansion of water, of frozen water, of ice, basically, results because of the freezing that has um, taken place. OK, so uh, there's one other experiment that I'd like to do to show you an interesting property of water. Um, water is uh, uh, full sometimes of minerals. And, and in Madison and other parts of the country, we have what is called hard water. We have hardness in the water. That's why we have water softeners, to, re to soften the water and remove the hardness from it. So I have some water that I uh, uh, got out of tap in this uh, pitcher. I'm going to add it to this softener, which has in it what we call a, a resin. And this resin is going to exchange the calcium ions and the magnesium ions that are responsible for the hardness. And uh, we're going to test to see what effect that has. So uh, let's take a little bit of the water and put it in this uh, empty flask. And then take some liquid soap, put the soap in, and put the cork back on. And you see, we try to shake it and mix it together, and it doesn't. It doesn't froth. There's, there's scum there. That's because of the uh, calcium and magnesium ions that are in there. But if we take some of the softened water, which we just prepared, and we add uh, the same amount of liquid soap, then we put the cork on top, and we mix this. We see that the cleansing action, then, of the soft water is what we're really after, uh, and that we don't, we don't get the same effect as we have without uh, having softened the water. OK. <laughs> now, let's, uh, I have 10 beakers in a row. And I have another row of 10 beakers just behind them. And what I'm going to do is mix the contents of the beakers in the back row with what's in the front row, and we'll see what happens. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. There it is. Now I want to thank you for coming to my lab, and I want to urge you to enjoy yourselves this year. But remember, no matter what you do, science is fun. Thank you very much.